everybody calls Han Solo a bitch. Bring him on. I prefer a straight fight to all this sneaking around. I don't know where you get your delusions, laser brain. Oh, come on, bro. It's the wars. Well, we must be two weeks away from the release of some new Star Wars because it's all getting quiet. This is The Wars of More. I'm Joe. Of course, with me is my good buddy, Doug. Hey, Doug, how you doing this week? Doing all right, Joe. How you doing? Doing all right. Doing all right. Less than two weeks away is what I should have said. Right. Less than two weeks. Yes. So, of course. Got to get silent, right? Like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of how it always goes. It's. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's, it's not that there's nothing out there, but the big thing out there is like. Four years away. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I guess we'll get right into that. So Star Wars video gaming, right? Like, oh yeah, been kind of a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, to say the least. What isn't a roller coaster in Star Wars these days, though? When you the think Mandalorian. About it? Okay. Oh, good response. <laughs> <laughs> I should just say Disney Plus. Disney Plus has not been a roller coaster. Right. Everything going on there has been pretty stable. Yeah. There's been rocky patches for really what is ancillary problems. I was going to say, you know, I mean, that's kind of stuff like, you know, helmet, no helmet, you know, whatever. Helmet, no helmet. (laughs) Uh, In the cast, not in the cast, you know, like stuff like that. Yes. Um, But production delays, things like that haven't been plaguing the Disney Plus properties. Right. And this year, like, we talk about a game that's three or four years away, and it's like, no. Alleged game. Yeah. Yes. Yes. There's plenty of time for them to cancel this thing. So, of course, what we're talking about, if you, it, it, as long as you're not living under a rock, you may have seen the trailer for Star Wars Eclipse. It's a new Star Wars game coming from, oh, what's the studio's name? I just had it. Quantic Dream. I was going to say Quantum Leap, but. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Different show. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very, very different. <laughs> but yeah, Quantic Dream. And, um, you know, obviously partnered with Lucasfilm Games. Right. So, yeah, there's a trailer. A very, uh, very graphically intensive trailer for a game that's three to four years away. Yeah. It, I got to say, that thing looks fabulous. You know, just, you know, you're talking uh, it's like cinematic quality, right? I mean, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Looked fabulous. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> right. You know, I. It's one of those things like. It has its moments that connect it to Star Wars. Right. Yes. But the rest of it, I feel like, is this like something for Indiana Jones or. Indiana Jones. Interesting. Yeah. Just like this, like tribal thing, beating on a drum, like give me some real temple of doom vibes, right? Like, Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. I get that. It was just very different. Yeah. So I'd like to say like, like, you know, I it's like, I have no idea what's going on here. Then I see it's High Republic era. I was like, yes, I definitely have no idea what's going on here. <laughs> yeah, there is um, that. And and I say that having, you know, read, you know, some of the High Republic stuff. Um, I haven't seen anything that, or haven't read anything that screams that. Right. Like, that was different even from what I've read High Republic-wise. I don't know if there's something I missed, which is very possible. 
Right. I didn't get any into any of the young adult novels or the comic books. I pretty much stuck to the the main novels. Right. So, and from what I've been seeing everywhere, that's not enough anymore. To stick with the main novels, you're like missing out on a lot because they put a lot of pertinent stuff in comic books and the young adult novels have way more impact than they used to. Gotcha. Interesting. I guess when you say that everything's going to be canon, that's what's going to happen, isn't it? Uh Uh-huh. So, to my next point. This is where I'll start to gripe a little. Uh oh. Um, Quantic Dream, right? Yeah. Um, the style of game that they make. They're very narrative driven. Okay. Um. If you, I haven't played any Quantic Dream games. Um. But from what I've seen of it, it looks like a very well polished Telltale game, right? Like, oh, it's this story driven, click through. Um, but in a Quantic Dream game, you get to walk around, you know, move to your next objective, things like that. But it's still very narrative driven. Okay, I, I don't know. I haven't watched enough of it to know. Like, is there winning and losing? Like, can you make the wrong decision? Because It just seems like whatever decision you make uh, affects the game going forward. Okay. So, yeah, it affects the game, but you're still going to get to the end. But you can go through and play again, make different decisions, and the outcome's different. I was just going to say, so this could have different endings and stuff, depending on... Okay. So you just get to play your own movie. Gotcha. Your own decisions. And that's not my... I I could see how that could appeal to some people, you know, but yeah. But why is that a game? Not right. Usually, when it comes to games, you're looking at you know, especially Star Wars games, right? You want action. Yeah, I mean, there's supposed to be action in this, but you're not really controlling it, like right. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe there's more to these games than what I've seen. Um, it's very possible. I, I don't know much about Quantic Dream. I just know what I've seen with this, uh, was it Detroit Become Human? Okay. Oh, and I'm watching the gameplay for that, and I'm like, yeah, it's not my style. You know, I just don't see... What am I achieving? Right. What's the... I just get to tell a different story every time I play it. That's not achieving something to me. That's just picking the various cards that you've laid out for me. Yeah. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Instead of overcoming the (laughs) obstacles you've laid out for me. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's, that's the big thing, right? There's no obstacle there because is there a desired ending? Is there a, like, what's the obstacle here? There's no obstacle. Right. So, huh. yeah, just not my style. What do you think? Well, I, I see how that could appeal to a, a lot of people. I do, right? too. I do, too. You know, and I agree it's not exactly something that I would be too interested in playing, you know. Uh, I guess it'd be the sort of thing that I could see myself like watching if somebody else went through all the trouble of, you know, going through every ending possible, you know. Oh, so this like could get you on Twitch, is what you're saying? Yeah, like, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that aside, you know, it's kind of. You know, one thing, I don't know, the one, unlike what we talked about last week, this does look Star Warsy, you know, so. Well, I'll give you that. 
because you know there's plenty in there that uh made me think ooh that's star Wars. now the the you know you mentioned the drummer guys right uh, yeah that that was a little out there you said indie uh yeah i could see that it's that definitely is something that throws you off and you know makes you yeah, what's this guy rising out of at the end is that tar is it I, like <laughs> sith ooze i don't know <laughs> i mean you you gotta wonder what that's all about because that's that's like nothing we've ever seen in Star Wars before. Yeah, I mean, hard to say, but it, it, to me, I don't know. It it kind of looks like there's, you know, like we had Trade Federation going on. Looks like there could be an opposing like uh, corporate force or something. And, uh, you know, then you have this looks like uh, supernatural thing happening there at the end. I don't know, it's just weird. But, you know. I did see a pretty funny joke. Uh oh. <laughs> I don't know if you'll like this one or not. Okay. Uh, it said uh, accepting Star Wars Eclipse as canon means that you're accepting Star Wars Twilight, Star Wars New Moon, and Star Wars Breaking Dawn as canon. Nice. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> wow. I was like, hmm. I don't know what to think of this comment. <laughs> I mean, Eclipse makes sense just because you would imagine in uh, in this very vast galaxy, eclipses happen all the time. Right. So, I didn't think the naming convention was like that bad. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I think that I, I like the logo, right? Like, right. Like, it looks cool. It looks Star Wars. Um, the trailer overall, I felt looked very Star Wars. Um, but the drums and the uh, that that I was like, <sighs> it could be, it very well could be very Star Warsy. We've seen a lot of weird stuff, right? Yeah. Especially in animation, right? True. So, not uh, not ruling it out. But it is very different. Yeah, that's for sure. Definitely different. Difference not a problem. Right. It's it's just got to got to maintain you know, that Star Wars feel. I mean, yeah. Different and good, way better than different and sucks. Like, <laughs> got that right. I just i I can't help but uh, thirst for something different, gameplay wise. Okay, and just because this is what this studio does in the past doesn't mean that's what's coming. Right, you got to keep that in mind. Studios branch out all the time, do something different. But a lot of times when you bring on a studio, you're bringing them on for what they bring to the table. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that's fair. Fair. So, um, I don't think we mentioned it. We did mention it takes place in a hyperbolic era. Never mind. Right, which Never mind. don't mind me. Okay, <laughs> I mean, by the time it actually releases, High Republic era will be over, man. I uh, think uh, so. Uh, no, I just talking. You know, twenty twenty four release at the earliest is what I'm hearing. So that was my joke. 
Gotcha. Yeah, lame joke. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> all right. So sticking with Star Wars video games. So Legacy of the Sith for Star Wars: The Old Republic. Mm-hmm. The expansion we talked about. Oh man, it must have been months ago. It must have been at this point. <laughs> So, was originally slated to be released on December 14th. That's come and gone. Yes. Um, now, they didn't wait till December 14th to say that, you know, hey, it's not coming out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guess what? <laughs> they did it a little bit before. But uh, it's been pushed back to February 15th. So. Wow. Another Star Wars delay. Hmm. Interesting. Now, this isn't uncommon in video games, right? Like, Yeah, that's true. I'm just thinking it's starting to become not uncommon in Star Wars. It's right. <laughs> right. I mean, there's a, there's a difference, though, between, you know, filming a movie, though, and, and, like, trying to roll out a big expansion to existing code, right? <laughs> sure. But, I mean, you know, there's filming a movie and there's, there's like, uh, you know, hey, we're going to make this movie. And then it's like. Wait a minute. No, we're not. Well, maybe we are. Maybe, I, I don't know. Are we? I, you know, that's what I'm talking about. Right. There's been a lot yeah, I was a, a little surprised to see a two-month delay. You would have think, you think it'd be longer if it's going to be a delay? No, I, with it getting as close as it was to release, uh -huh. I expected a shorter delay. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, you know, a month, something like that. Like they're, they need to make a couple minor fixes. Right. Uh, a two month delay. It seems like they've known that something was a problem for a while. Gotcha. And it's a big problem. <laughs> Something, something's breaking. Gotcha. You know, when they, when they roll this out and test. Right. You know, that's the only reason I can think of a, a two year or two year, two month delay. Something's broken. Right. So I, I find it odd that they waited till the month of release to say, Hey, yeah, not, not going to happen. <laughs> that is, that is odd, but Hey, so, but Hey, yeah. I mean, this is the one I'm keeping an eye out for. Cause this is the one that might get me back into this game. Gotcha. You know, just the title, right? Legacy of the Sith. Like, all right. Right. Sounds cool. It's the it's the ten year anniversary expansion. That still doesn't seem right. Yeah. It's been <laughs> out for ten years, man. <laughs> that does not seem right. So wild. So wild that it's been wow. Still blows me away. Yes. Ten years. Ten years. But hey, you know. The, the sad part is, is this game's probably approaching its lifespan. Right. So this is probably their last hurrah. Like, gotcha. Going out with a bang. Yeah. I would expect to see, I would expect to see a replacement coming. You would hope, right? I mean, you know, and one that's probably going to, Maybe connect to the canon a little better. Not saying that it's going to expand the canon, but maybe see it connected to the canon a little better because, you know, this one's been just destroyed canon wise. Gotcha. Namely, Korriban. Ah, uh, that. <laughs> I had to throw it in there. Right. Still pisses me off. I know, but yeah. What do you do? Eh, nothing. <laughs> exactly. All right. So moving on, moving on. Yeah. So Mando, the Mandalorian season three. Ah, yes. Code names been leaked, <laughs> leaked, released. Who knows anymore? It was a leak as far as I'm aware. Yeah. 
They all keep leaking. That's why I said, eh, I think they're just releasing it. Yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah. Like, everyone's leaking before release. And it's like, <sighs> this isn't a leak anymore. Well, yeah, this is one of those things, though. This this is a classic thing for Star Wars. This goes back to the, you know, the days of Return of the Jedi and the Blue Harvest thing and all that. So, you know, it's kind of falls in the wheelhouse of what we know, you know. Right, right. So, so seasons one and two of The Mandalorian were shot under the code name Huckleberry. And uh, Book of Boba Fett was being produced under the code name of Buccaneer. And season three of The Mandalorian is apparently being produced under the code name of Foundry. So, Found. Foundry, right. So, you know, the first thing that everybody's flocking to is got to be uh got to mean that we're going to see the armorer in season 3. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's low hanging fruit right there. I uh, yeah, it is. Um you know, it, it it's really hard to glean anything from these code names, you know? I, <sighs> Namely the code names have never meant Jack. Exactly. So, I mean, what, what, it, looking back, right, on seasons one and two that both were under the code name Huckleberry. Right. What about Huckleberry gives you any hint to what happened in those two seasons? Nothing other than, okay. other than we all know that, you know, <laughs> that line from uh, Tombstone, right? And, I'll be your Huckleberry. Right. And, uh, you know, it's kind of got a Western vibe to the show, I guess. <laughs> I mean, that's as close as you can. Woo! Yeah, I know. It's about it, That's though. our connection there, but this one means the armor is back. Yeah, it, right. It's kind of hard to. Uh... Well, here's the other part of that that I think is low-hanging fruit, right? Of course the armor is going to be back. You would think so. I, I I expected to see the armorer back in season two, but we did not. So, I mean, to see the armorer in season three, you know, we have we have a whole lot more going on now, right? There's this, uh, well, let's just say at this point, tension <laughs> of sorts between uh, Bo-Katan and Mando, due to the Darksaber, and... You know, maybe somehow with, you know, the Mandalorian way, right? The, this is the way versus, uh, you know, whatever way bo is doing things. Yeah. Uh, th- this could this could all play into, uh, I don't know, some sort of, you know, a battle well, maybe or something. <laughs> that, that just... So I would say my my hint that the armor is going to be back is just Din's flouting of the rules at this point. Right. Right. They have this code. Namely, you don't really reveal your face to anybody. Right. Which he's broken. But, which he's broken on numerous occasions. Yes. Um, can't stop breaking it by. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, and, and like the first one I couldn't understand is like, man, he's going to try and enter a secured area with his helmet on. Like, what the hell did you think was going to happen? Yeah, exactly. Oh, when he was using that terminal, like, yeah. Oh yeah. Mandalorian helmets are totally in there. (laughs) You know, if there's anything that's going to get you through security, it's, you know, scanning your face with a Mando helmet on. Yeah. Well, I guess he didn't have the Mando helmet. No, it wasn't. It was that, yeah, Imperial. Imperial helmet. But yeah, that would be, that would be very poor security protocol. If you could just wear the helmet and get through. (laughs) Exactly. Or Stormtrooper helmet. It's like, you're in. I mean, that's the equivalent of my password is password. 
password. Password, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I I have a feeling that there's going to be some sort of a, you know, maybe Bo-Katan and uh, the armor kind of button heads, which I find the thoughts of that kind of interesting. It's, you know, and, and you know, you're going to be able to take sides here to some degree in, in fandom. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of love for Bo-Katan and, and what she's been about in the past, you know. And, and you know, we've we've had what little there has been of the armor story. She's kind of, like, built up to be this principal uh, character, you know. So, should be interesting, to say the least. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I guess to say the least. Is <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I And this is, you know, this is all coming from, you know, this, this code name they're working under, which, again, to reiterate, doesn't mean a thing. So, you know, I mean, Blue Harvest didn't mean anything to the movie, so... I mean, Foundry could just mean that uh, Grogu's coming back to him, and he's going to get Mando armor and That'd be start awesome. whooping ass as a bounty hunter. Heck, yeah. So, that's the other thing people are, you know, they, <laughs> ever since the finale of season two, you know, are we going to see Grogu again? Does that mean we're going to see Luke? You know, what do you think? You think nope. we'll see Luke Skywalker again? No? Nope. Wow. It's funny because a lot of people believe we're going to see uh, Luke Skywalker in the Mandalorian again and in Ahsoka. You may see him in Ahsoka. You think so? May. Right. Um, I still think doubtful, but you may. Really? I see that being much more likely than, again, in The Mandalorian. I just feel like they did the Grogu, Luke Skywalker thing. It opened up an avenue to tell another story later. That story is not necessarily going to happen in these shows. Right. That's one of those, I feel like they tied up that end for now. In the story of the Mandalorian. So, okay, I'm just going to ask this. Do you think they're kind of like biding their time here until they feel like the technology is good enough where they can have that character, you know, of Luke portrayed more accurately digitally and, you know, go with that? I mean... You know, cause either that or what they feel is the right time to debut a new actor. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. We're onto that again. I see. Oh, <laughs> I think it's the right way to go. Sure. I, I, I get it. I, I, I do. I, I just feel like that's going to be another, another, uh, it's a mountain to climb. No, contention. no doubt about it. Um, and it's gotta be executed. Well, Right. But I think it's, they don't feel it's the right time to cross that road in recasting these characters. I don't feel like they think fandom as a whole will accept it. Right. And I think that's a shame. Just my personal opinion. I get it. Um, look, it's just. You know, Mark Hamill can't play young Luke Skywalker anymore. Right. You know, okay, yeah, they were able to pull it off here, you know, with using a, a double and CGI. And, yes. You know, working with his voice. They were able to pull it off, but they were able to pull it off for what? A minute and a half? <laughs> yeah. And that minute and a half was probably like a quarter of the season's budget, right? Like could have been. Yeah. So 
it's just not feasible to do this for any real meaningful content. Movies. You know, uh, television series. It's not feasible. Right. The only feasible way to tell these stories going forward is to recast. And I don't think, you know, I, I know there's a lot of, oh, Sebastian Stan, right? Right. I don't necessarily think that's the avenue they want to go. They don't want another actor that has other baggage. Oh, really? I, I, otherwise they'd have done it already because the guy's like, the guy looks pretty close. <laughs> right. You know, I think they're waiting for that moment to find the right, you know, incoming actor something like that, that has the look possible, you know, someone they can label right off the get as a franchise actor. Gotcha. This is your new Luke Skywalker. Yep. Hmm. I just don't think that they want to make that. uh, I guess my thing is, you know, if we get more stories with Luke Skywalker, I'm okay with it. <laughs> right. That's, that's, I just don't want, I, I just don't think they want the, oh, he's also Bucky. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a lot of baggage, right? Like whether you, yeah, it, it could be considered as such. Yes. When it comes to franchise films, it, this is what happens. Right. There's always going to be that comparison to oh, how he did Luke Skywalker versus how he did Bucky. Yeah, I just, I don't think they want to go that route. Yeah. Well, I mean, what the hell do I know? (laughs) But you see, and the other thing is stop fan casting, right? Like, yeah, I know. I know. I know. I I think that hurts it more than anything. (laughs) Well, it certainly, uh, you know, (laughs) It makes it hard for them to get away with doing anything else, you know, for a lot of people, you know, it's, well, yeah, it gets, it makes it hard to do anything else. And it also makes it to where they're like, "Ah, we don't want to make this a habit. Right. You know, and you know, yeah. Okay. He looks like Luke Scott. Can he act like Luke Skywalker? Yeah. That's going to be part of it. That's, that's probably bigger than looking like him right i mean if you can't act like luke skywalker then what he looks like is less less relevant (laughs) yeah not important like like would you accept it this is my question would you accept an actor that comes in looks exactly like the person who did it before but does a real shitty job yeah that'd be a problem I understand he's an established actor, done good things with other stuff, but can he do Luke Skywalker? Right. There's a lot to that. I think, yeah, there is. You know, I think someone that, you know, maybe looks similar to Mark Hamill, right? Similar. Right. But sounds more like him, postures more like him, has mannerisms more like him. They would be able to sell it better than someone who's a dead ringer. Right. You know, looks what in the looks department. Yeah, totally. Because Sebastian Stan doesn't sound like Mark. <laughs> right. Um, I haven't seen a lot that shows his posturing and manner mannerisms like Mark Hamill. I, I don't see a lot of that. Right. So, could be wrong. Like I said, what the hell do I know? (laughs) I'm just a guy talking about Star Wars. Exactly. Yeah, what do you know? (laughs) Nothing. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, I like it. I'm no, I don't work in a casting department somewhere, you know? (laughs) Right. Yep. That's my two cents. (laughs) <laughs> all right so here's an interesting little nugget 
So, apparently, Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi joins the National Film Registry. Oh, nice. So. What's the National Film Registry? <laughs> well, it's basically, uh, what is it, Library of Congress? Is it Library of Congress? Okay. I believe so. Yeah, so. Uh, it's all about preserving stuff, right? Yeah, so Return of the Jedi secured the greatest number of public votes among a pool of over 6,150 movies before becoming one of 25 films selected for inclusion by the Librarian of Congress, you know, Dr. So-and-so. Hmm. So, and then there's the National... Huh? I just said, hmm. <laughs> yeah. Things so, that make um, you go. Yeah, so National Film Preservation Board. So, yeah, it looks like a, there's a board and in conjunction with the Library of Congress. Basically, this thing gets preserved. Well... As it should be for all time. Don't yep. you agree? Okay. I was going to say. Um, okay. <laughs> I think it will be anyway. Yes, of course. I mean, that'll be the day when you know, the original trilogy falls out of favor, right? Like, no one, everybody's like, yeah, yeah. screw those. Screw yeah, those. exactly. Yeah. yeah I don't, I don't want to watch that movie anymore. What? <laughs> Every time they release it, it sells tons of copies exactly i don't think it's going anywhere right unless this is going to survive when nothing else does so you're saying it's like what the cockroach of movies or i guess (laughs) (laughs) maybe more like the twinkie oh okay (laughs) better I like it. Yeah, more desirable than the cockroach. Might right? get like, a little stale, but you can still eat it. That's yep. <laughs> good to go. Uh, not eating a cockroach. Hey, times are tough, right? Like, yeah. Do what you got to do, right? Wow, that took a turn. That sure did. Did not, did not expect to get asked. Oh, you're saying this is like a cockroach? <laughs> Yes, dog. I'm comparing Return of the Jedi to a cockroach. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> it's just part of me hating Star Wars. Like exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, oh, I love this job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I was just looking at who's on the National Film Preservation Board. Yeah. So, board chair is uh, Dr. Jacqueline Stewart. I don't know who that is. Yeah. Uh, Alfre Woodard. Martin Scorsese. Oh, nice. Christopher Nolan. Huh. Richard Masser. And M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, interesting. Well, there's a few names in there that are quite familiar. Yeah. I read that though. I was like, Christopher Nolan, really? Like, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, interesting. I, mean, I guess it's all news. I didn't even know the Nas- National Film Preservation Board was a thing. Right. I guess it makes sense, right? Like, there's a preservation board for everything. Wow. Certainly not for this show. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> We're the first on the chopping block. Exactly. <laughs> the what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Never heard of it. Yep. All right. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Guess that's it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That was very anticlimactic. Yeah. Good show, Joe. All right. <laughs> I was like, I was looking at my list. I was like, holy shit, we're done. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, man, that's embarrassing. Oh, it's fine. Hey, we talked about that at the top. It's, it's you know. It's a light week. It's, it's a light week. Short. We are we are all in deep anticipation for 
uh, Book of Boba Fett. So yeah, normally I'm, I'm more on top of it than that. I'm like, oh, like we got one more thing left. All right, after this we finish it up. Yeah, here I was thinking I had something else. Oh, that's amazing. I love it. All right. Well, if you have anything to add, we could use it right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, if you have anything to add, you can always email us show at the wars and com. That's the best way to get a hold of us. Uh, we're also on social media at the wars and more on Twitter, facebook.com slash the wars and more find all that and all the ways to find the show over at the wars and Uh, any final thoughts this week, Doug? No, I think we've about covered it. <laughs> all right. We will talk next week. Yeah.